What's up, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing well out there. Welcome back again for another Trick Tips video. For the third installment, we're gonna work on the Touchdown Raise. In my opinion, the Touchdown Raise is one of the most iconic skills when you think about tricking. It's the one that personally got me into tricking and it's no question why it won the IG poll this week. Definitely feel free to follow me on IG or comment down below so you guys can take part in voting for the next skill that you guys want a trick tips video on. Other than that, quick disclaimer, this isn't a full in-depth tutorial, but I do believe there's something in here for everyone, whether you're trying to learn the touch on raise or whether you're trying to make it better. So definitely feel free to watch this video no matter what skill level you're at. And if you have something to teach me, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. Also, one final note, I don't consider my touchdown raise to be the best or most powerful and I don't consider my methods to be the best or most efficient. However, these are methods that I've taught touchdown raise to people with and if you feel like they help you, then awesome. I'm just putting this information out there for you guys. With that said, let's get to work. Trick tip number one, probably the most important when starting to learn the raise is find the progression that works best for you. No two people are the same, and that means that no two people are learning exactly the same. If you have trouble learning the raise with a certain method, don't be afraid to experiment and try other means to get in there. For me personally, I learned the lazy boy to raise to touchdown raise method, whereas other people learn the Gumby and transition that into a touchdown raise. So definitely experiment around and find the one that works best for you. Method one is the Gumby method. I recommend this method to anyone that has good shoulder mobility and back flexibility. Good prerequisites are the cartwheel on your opposite side and a very solid bridge. Just like we use the cartwheel to learn the aerial, we can use the Gumby to learn the touchdown raise. This method is simple and straightforward, but that means in no way that it's easy. You can just follow the simple steps. Just make sure you do enough reps at every step before you progress. First, get a good and really clean Gumby. Second, make it really, really fast. Third, start to make it floaty. And fourth, put it all together. Really use that speed to get onto that second hand and miss the first one. You can use this method to learn touchdown raise as well as raise. It's very efficient, very straightforward, but you need to put in the work. You need to try hard. <laughs> Some drills that I found really useful for this method are the plank to bridge transition. This is really good for understanding the arch as well as learning how to move and spot over really really important things that i want you to focus with every step of this method is one kick with straight legs this is going to make sure that you start to develop a lot of power it adds aesthetics as well and two do not lose eye contact with the ground this will help us we'll talk about this later on in one of the next trick tips but really make sure you focus on kicking with straight legs and keeping your eye on the ground the second method is the one that I personally used to learn the raise. I couldn't really use the Gumby because I lacked shoulder and wrist mobility, so my progression was the raise. And for me, that started with a lazy boy or a tornado kick with straight legs. It doesn't have to be pretty, just focus on getting up there, making sure your legs are straight on the way up, both the first and the second one. Also on spotting the target in front of you just like you would a tornado kick. Once I got really comfortable with that and was really comfortable with the motion and could just do it like it was just a regular move, I changed my spot from in front of me to the ground as I'm turning. What that did was it gave me the confidence to look for my landing as well as kick just a little bit harder, just enough to invert and then I did the same thing with that, got super comfortable with kicking, putting more energy into that kick, and eventually I had an inverted raise. This took some time. Again, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but you gotta put in the numbers. You gotta make sure, for one, it's safe, and then two, practice it until you master it. Practice it until it's super comfortable and you don't have to think about anything and you're just having fun. Once I had the raise, 
it was just a matter of kicking a little bit harder and getting a little bit comfortable with just tapping my hand on the floor. You don't have to completely place your hand on the floor. You don't have to completely send yourself onto your arm. We don't want to carry our entire weight on one hand when we're not ready for it. What I did was I got comfortable with just tapping my hand on the floor, making sure I landed safe, and then I'd kick a little harder, get a little more rotation. The faster you're rotating, the less weight is ultimately on your arm, just like with the back handspring. Really slow back handsprings lead to bad wrists, bad shoulders, bad backs, but then when you do them confidently and you do them a little bit faster, you're just using them to push. You're not using them to catch yourself. We're not catching ourselves in a one-handed handstand, yeah? We're just only using our hands to aid the flip and give us just that little bit of lift to give us a crap ton of power. So those are all the progressions that I want to share with you. There may be other ones that will also help you, but I hope that the ones that I showed you will help you towards your path to touchdown raise. But now let's move on to trick tip number two, and that is step in place. I personally think of the touchdown raise as kind of a yin yang in that I want as much rotational uh, energy as I can get and not as much vertical difference when I take off because if I go really high then I'm gonna come down all my energy is gonna go down into the ground but if I think of it as a rotational move kind of like a back handspring or a whip then I find it easier to swing and pop out of it when I first started touchdown raise I used to take these huge steps and my last step before my takeoff was this huge lunge because I thought it would give me an equally huge touchdown raise but I was never able to swing or pop out of it. It wasn't until I thought of trying to step in place that way my leg can swing way more and I can have way more rotational energy again closer to the yin yang that I found the pop and the swing to be so much easier. This not only takes up less space, but I personally find it more efficient and more powerful. It might be different for you, but feel free to try it out. And please, as one last final note and just a tip, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> uh, do not take up the whole floor for a touchdown raise, at least not at the beginning. If you're doing some huge tricks, then by all means, do you. Like, I'm not gonna blame you for trying to generate as much power as you feel you need. But for a gainer, you are better off trying to get efficiency and then using that for the flip. For trick tip number three, we're going to talk about spotting the floor the entire time. This not only is the key to consistency, the key to the timing, but it's also going to be the key to mastering the touchdown raise. In the beginning, it's extremely important because it's going to take away a lot of that fear. Most, most of the time when we're learning flips and inversions, we're scared of what we can't see because we don't know the end result of it. But just like the cartwheels, the least scary inversion on earth, so can the touchdown raise be, or so is the touchdown raise. Sorry. By trying to look at the floor the entire time, you're going to be completely aware of where you are in the air and where the ground is relatively to you. That way, if something goes wrong, you're prepared. Your hands are up, so feel free to use your hands to catch yourself. Feel free to land on whatever muscly part is. Just remember, protect the head and never land with a straight arm or straight legs. That's the most important thing safety-wise. Afterwards, once you get comfortable and once you get the touchdown raise, feel free to, while still looking at the floor the entire time, put in more power. You can see the floor, so definitely feel free to play with the power and play with the timing. This move is a lot about timing, so this is a really good way to confidently learn the timing, play with it. For the fourth and final trick tip, we're going to be talking about practicing the takeoffs. Once you find comfort and consistency with the touchdown raise, feel free to start practicing the different takeoffs with every rep. The touchdown raise is a beautiful move in itself, but it's also very powerful if you use it as a transitional move. So it's really good to start developing the habits as soon as you get it. Just like we practice with round offs or cartwheels where we starting a lunge, finishing a lunge with your chest up, just to start to develop the whole round off punch back tuck technique same thing with the touchdown raise start to do your pops start to do your swings that way when you want to do touchdown raise swing gainer or touchdown raise pop flash it's super seamless and so much easier the transition time is going to take so little time 
the best tip that I found for this was starting to make sure that as you're standing up out of that touchdown raise by blocking with your shoulder and shifting your spot from the ground to a little bit in front of you, your body is going to teeter-totter itself in a way where you can vertically move up as high as you want to go. So with that in mind, I hope all these trick tips were very useful for you guys. Definitely once again, let me know down in the comment section below. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a dislike if you didn't, but please leave a comment to let me know why and what I can do to make these tutorials or trick tips better for you guys. Thank you guys so much for the support and a big special thanks to Kyla Hymas for providing the beautiful gumbies and beautiful touchdown raises used in this video. Her IG is in the description down below. Make sure to follow her. And um, yeah, good luck guys. Good luck on your journey. I appreciate each and every single one of you. See you next time.